Another approach to dynamically changing music is to use a layered approach, also known as reorchestration or a vertical approach. With this method, Ys can be used to automatically choose variations of musical parts that have been written to be interchangeable. For the layered approach, we'll import multiple audio files that when played simultaneously complement each other both rhythmically and harmonically. We can import these audio files all at once. Right-click the Music Work unit, choose Import Audio Files. In this case, all of the audio files for the various sections of the combat music are already organized into folders. So we'll click Add Folders, and then we'll navigate to the combat music. For this tutorial, we're going to focus on the A section of the combat music, and we'll confirm by clicking Select Folder. In the Audio File Importer window, we can see that there's a variety of files, including bass, synths, choirs, and guitar parts. But instead of importing each audio file as a unique music segment, we instead want to represent all of the audio files as music tracks within a single music segment. We can do this quickly by changing the Combat A folder at the top so that it's imported as a music segment. We can see that this automatically changes all of the audio files contained within to be imported as music tracks. We'll just click Import, and we can see that the Combat A music segment appears in the Project Explorer. And when we expand it, we see each of the audio files displayed as music tracks. If we select the Combat A object, then in the Music Segment Editor, we see that all of the imported content lays out across multiple tracks with waveform displays, much like in a conventional DAW. The next step is to configure the music segment so that the music loops continuously. For this to work properly, the temporal property of the music segment must match the tempo of the music. In this case, that's 138 beats per minute. We also need to set the entry and exit cues. None of these file names indicate that they have any pre-entry, so the entry cue does not need to be moved. All of the files indicate that they are based on eight measure long segments, but it's clear that some have different post-exit content due to different decay times. Since all of the tracks are part of the same music segment, adjusting the exit cue applies to all of the included music tracks. We'll set the exit cue to bar 9. When played from the transport, music segments only play one time, but we need this 8-bar music segment to loop continuously. To do this, we'll place the Combat A music segment within a music playlist container and configure that container to infinitely loop, a concept taught in a previous video. Right-click the Combat A music segment, choose New Parent, Music Playlist Container, and we'll name the new object Combat. Don't forget that the 120 beat per minute default tempo of this music playlist container will be inherited by the music segment it contains, so we'll need to change that as well. We'll set its tempo to 138. Now we're going to expand the Combat music playlist, and then drag the Combat A music segment into the Music Playlist Editor. Now we need to set its group to loop infinitely. Now when we go back and choose the Combat Music Playlist container and play it, all of the tracks play simultaneously and these will loop continuously. With all of the tracks playing simultaneously, the music sounds way too busy as it was never intended for all of the tracks to play at once. While playing the music playlist container, we can return to the contain music segment where we can take advantage of the solo and mute functions found in the track headers. However, as we proceed, we're going to need to start and stop playback of the music playlist container a number of times. The problem is that as we work, we'll be clicking on various objects that will cause the transport to change focus. To keep the transport focused on the Combat Music Playlist container, we'll pin it. Just be sure to remember to unpin it once you've completed the exercise. Now let's select the Combat A music segment. Notice that the transport stayed focused on the music playlist container. Now back in the Combat A music segment editor, let's scroll back up to the top. If I want to hear this arpeggio part by itself, I'll click solo on it, and then click play in the transport. We can now hear the part. If I want to add the guitar part in, I'll click solo on it. And then I can clear any solos by clicking the solo reset button in the toolbar.
You can also mute and unmute tracks in the same way. In this case, let's mute all of the tracks here towards the top. And then we'll scroll down so that we can take a listen to some of the tracks further below, like the choir or brass. Again, we can mute these or unmute them. And then we can clear all mutes by clicking the Mute Reset button in the toolbar. By experimenting with solos and mutes, we're able to manually get a sense of how we can get variations of the theme by introducing different combinations of tracks. Fundamentally, we want WISE to do something similar for us when the music is played at runtime. This is accomplished using subtracks. In this case, we have three variations of guitar tracks, Guitar 1, Guitar 2, and Guitar 3. We'll use subtracks to randomly select which guitar should play. To start, we need to convert the first guitar track from a normal track type to a random step track. Right-click the header and choose Random Step. The blue color now indicates that this track is a random step track type. This type of track can contain multiple subtracks, from which only one will randomly be chosen to play each time the music track is played. However, since there's only one subtrack on this random step track, that doesn't offer much variation. We'll need to add some more subtracks. Right click the track header and choose Add Subtrack. Now we can simply drag the clip from the second guitar track to the new subtrack. Since there is a third guitar part, we'll add another subtrack and place the third guitar part on it. Now we no longer need the normal guitar tracks that are left over, so we'll hold Shift, select them, then right click and choose Delete. Now let's take a listen, but let's first solo the guitar track to better hear it. There's guitar one. There's guitar three. Back to guitar one, and here's guitar two. In some cases, you may want to hear a specific subtrack just so you can hear out sounds during the authoring process. Rather than repeatedly playing the music playlist hoping that it plays, you can force a subtrack to play by clicking the Force Usage button. Let's do this with the second guitar part. Now we can hear Guitar 2 play, and it will always play as long as it's the forced track. Note that the status of the Force Usage button has no effect when the sound bank is built and the music is played at runtime. It's purely for auditioning purposes. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and deselect it. In some situations, we may want the progression for which the tracks are played to be predictable. For example, let's say we want the guitar to build intensity, playing the first part, followed by the second, and then to the third. For this, we can right-click the track and change it to a sequence step track, turning it green. Now each time the music segment is played, the track moves through the progression of the subtracks in order. There's guitar one, the next time it plays. Here's guitar two, and the next time it plays. Guitar three, and then it will go back to the beginning with guitar one again. Consider that not hearing a part can provide yet another variation. In fact, not hearing a track can be one of the best variations. Let's add another subtrack to the guitars and leave it empty. Now at least once every four times we will not hear the guitar part. We can use this approach with a lot of other tracks that don't have recorded variations. For example, let's go down to this high choir part. We'll change this one to a random step track and then add a subtrack. So we'll now randomize if the choir plays or not. If you don't want the track to play that often, simply add more blank subtracks to decrease the chance of it playing. Now, I'll go ahead and use this approach with a lot of the other tracks. Okay, so let's take solo off this guitar part and take a listen. So now, each time we play the combat music segment,
we get different variations, providing a lot of variety without increasing the use of memory.